You cannot do that because otherwise you will get a contradiction. Here, let me show you guys two things that we cannot do in math because otherwise we will get something nonsense. So, for the first one, let's talk about the most famous one, and that has to be dividing by zero. And this is just going to be one way to show people why we cannot divide by zero. First, let's pick a number, let's say one, and let's multiply that by zero. And we know that one times zero is equal to zero. And then let's pick another number. Did you say 17? Okay, 17. Let's multiply that by zero, and we will also get zero. Since this is equal to zero, likewise this is equal to zero, so we can put this and that together. One times zero equals 17 times zero. Agree? Then, if you allow dividing by zero, let's go ahead and do that right here. Divide this by zero, divide that by zero. Hey, same thing, right? Let's cross it out. Likewise, this and that, let's cross it out. And we will end up with what? On the left-hand side, we get one. On the right-hand side, we get 17. Does this make sense? Of course not. So where is the mistake? Of course, dividing by zero. This right here, it's bad, right? This right here, it's bad. So this is just how you can show that we cannot divide it by zero because otherwise this kind of things will happen. So you will have to avoid doing that. By the way, whenever you reach a contradiction, something that doesn't make sense, here's a notation for that. You can draw an arrow going like this and then another arrow going like that contradiction. That means you have done what you wanted to show. So go ahead and cross that out. This is not okay. Now, second one, square root of two numbers multiplying inside, let's say square root of a and b. If you want to break this apart as square root of a times square root of b, you have to be careful. Because if a and b are both negative, then in fact, this is not okay check this out. Let's start with 1. 1 is equal to square root of 1. Agree? Yeah? Okay. Square root, right? It's just a positive square root, so it's just 1. And then next, for this 1 inside, can we say that's negative 1 times negative 1? Sure thing. So negative 1 times negative 1. Let's replace this with that. And then we still have that square root. Then, Suppose if we can do that, then we will get square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1. All right, what's square root of negative 1? Well, that's just the imaginary unit, i. So we end up with i, and then likewise, this right here will also give us i. And then i times i gives us i squared. Finally, what's i squared? By definition, we end up with negative 1. So as you can see, we are saying 1 is equal to square root of 1, and then we are saying 1 is equal to square root of negative 1 times negative 1, and then we are saying that 1 is equal to square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1, and then we are saying that 1 is equal to i times i, and then we are saying that 1 is equal to i squared, and then at the end, we are saying that 1 is equal to negative 1. Of course, this right here is a contradiction, so something must be wrong. Where though? Of course, it's exactly right here. As you can see, if we have square root of a and b, if they are both negative, and if you want to break them apart, in fact, this is not okay. So from here to here is bad. Don't do it, because otherwise, this kind of things will happen. So we will just have to avoid doing so, just like the dividing by zero. So do you guys know another... Hmm, Things that we cannot do in math because otherwise we get this kind of things. I have one more, but I think that's more like a calculus topic. So I will do that on the, for another video. But anyway, though, for now, you know it. That's it.